How many of you have something you're passionate about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo. When I get excited, I do this thing. OK, you can show them. <laughs> he really does that. We all have this. We know we want it. We know how great it would feel to pursue that. So why are we so scared to make it happen? Our experience as passion seekers has led us to believe there are four steps you need to take. They aren't always obvious or easy, but we promise it will be a fun adventure. Four years ago, Sarah and I were recent college grads. She was on track to become a lawyer, and I got a job in construction management. We were on the path and set up to have great, lucrative careers. Everything was right, yet completely wrong. We hated what we were doing. We were doing it because it was the right decision. We were doing it because having a great salary, full benefits, and a 401k was success. <laughs> we didn't feel successful, though. We were miserable. The nine to five drudgery scared us. Who here knows what we're talking about? So our jobs were lacking, but something that was going really good at the time was our diet. And this is where we discovered step number one. Figure out what you want. Peter had gotten into running and was curious about the best diet for a runner. He'd stumbled upon the documentary Food Matters and loved it. Lucky for me, he shared it and it clicked. I know you guys have heard the saying, you are what you eat, but me personally, I never thought what I was eating was wrong or unhealthy. But after watching that documentary, I realized it might be normal, but it wasn't for me. And it wasn't for Peter either. So after that, we dramatically changed our diet. We cut out animal products, gluten, coffee, alcohol, a little bit extreme, maybe, but we felt amazing. Our energy increased. Weight fell off both of us. And stomach problems I'd had all throughout college disappeared. When we made those changes, life got exciting. We wanted to talk about food and health all of the time. And that's exactly what you want when looking for your passion. What's something you could talk about until you're blue in the face? What's something you could work on for hours that doesn't feel like work? What's something you would do for free? Oh, and we worked for free a lot. <laughs> Maybe you've already found your passion. What triggered it? How did it start? Watching that documentary really struck us. Sarah left her internship, and I left my job to pursue this passion. We didn't want kids to grow up like we did, not knowing the truth about food and simplicity of health. We felt called to do something, so we started a nonprofit to help younger generations. We knew nothing about nonprofits, but we knew we'd figure it out. And within a few months, we achieved tax-exempt status and were off and running. We had a website, Facebook page, and a meetup group. We were hosting events, but nothing was really working. We were feeling a little lost and discouraged. And here's where step number two comes in. Take action. The only way to success is through failure. So you need to learn how to appreciate your mistakes. We were off to a great start, learning from our failures, but we needed more traction in order for this to really work. There are going to be roadblocks. Fear is going to show up on Monday morning, but if you just stick with it, you'll be feeling pretty good come 5 o'clock. So things were a little rough with our nonprofit. And that's when we unveiled step number three. Really want it. We decided to try something new. We were going to teach kids cooking classes at Whole Foods Market. We'd struggled in the past filling up classes, so we didn't want that to be a problem. We did some research and found Groupon. They seem to do all the work of filling up the classes for you. We gave it a shot. It worked. They helped us fill up 400 seats in our summer kids cooking madness, we'll call it. We quickly realized we were in way over our heads. Teaching kids cooking classes is a lot of work. Man, those kids have energy. But we got better with every class. 
kids wanted to come back, and so did their parents. We quickly realized we needed help, so we enlisted volunteers. That was the summer we got a feeling of how it feels to be your own boss, create your own schedule, and do meaningful work. It was fun and empowering. That was also the summer we learned a very important lesson. You don't do Groupon to make money. So we were broke and exhausted, but still somehow excited. The adventure was just beginning. We needed a change of scenery, more sunshine, but most of all, we wanted to be surrounded by others with this same passion. And here's where step number two comes back. Take action. The slide that you're supposed to see. Ooh. Our latest idea presented itself. The Next Generation Health Tour. We are going to teach classes from Seattle all the way down to sunny San Diego. We launched an online fundraising campaign, got help with a video, and started promoting. We were confident. We were only asking for $35,000. Yeah, that's us. Ambitious. We only raised a thousand, but went anyways. <laughs> we sold everything in our apartment and were basically homeless for a month, couch surfing with newfound friends and teaching at schools, farmers markets, and health food stores. We finally arrived in San Diego. Well, Encinitas. <laughs> we were excited, scared, delighted, but unprepared. We were in the sweet spot of life. Our passion was happy that we were taking action, and it felt good to act from the heart for a change. Oh, and Sunitas, how fitting for today. So we found our new home, but we knew we couldn't go back to our traditional jobs, and we couldn't survive working off Groupon. So while we were on our health tour, we created curriculum for an after-school enrichment program. It was hands-on, plant-based, kids' cooking program. It incorporated school gardens, seasonal produce, and various health topics. We had the program, but we had never worked in schools. So we picked up the phone after Googling healthy schools and called a few principals. Let's just say I was nervous, but I gave it my best shot. And the principal said yes. We did recipes, did presentations, whatever it took. Now, they all didn't say yes, but most of them did and we taught kids cooking classes in schools for two seasons at three different schools. Parents, teachers, kids loved it. We loved it. We had the sweetest group of girls. They would come into class and tell me how excited they were for cooking class. Now, we weren't making cupcakes. I was serious. We're talking cucumber kale juice. And slowly, parents saw their children's taste buds change, their attitude towards food change. The reason the principal said yes was because we believed we could do it. When I was on the phone with the principal, I pictured myself already teaching. When we did teacher presentations, we pictured ourselves in the classroom working with the students. And this is where step number four comes in. In order for you to live your passion, you have to believe in it. Fear and negative thoughts are inevitable, but if you believe in the mission, they don't stand a chance. Since the beginning, we've wanted to make an impact. We were teaching these kids how to appreciate veggies and cook healthy food, but the parents had no clue how to make this stuff. Working with kids wasn't as effective as we hoped it would be. It was time to move on. So we started a side business with a parallel passion, community, local economy, and seasonal produce. We love shopping at the farmer's markets in San Diego. They're always bustling, and the variety of produce that grows is astonishing. We were so inspired. And here's where step number two comes back again. Take action. With our new venture, we did recipe demos at farmer's markets, taught in-home cooking classes, and even tried to create a wellness center in our garage Yes, we tried it all, but we never stopped searching until we knew what that next step would be. We were really getting the hang of this, and everyone loved our recipes, so we were going to create the most delicious, seasonal, plant-based, and gluten-free recipes the world had ever seen. But this time, we were going online. 
And currently we're here. We run an online membership site where we get to work with local farmers, families, and people who want to change their diet and eat seasonally. Our current business is exactly where it needs to be. We found our passion, step number one, in case you forgot, but we will always be at step number two because that's what keeps us growing and evolving. We found our passion through a documentary. Who knows, maybe yours came from chopsticks. That doesn't matter. All that matters is being able to wake up at 5 a.m. this excited. <laughs> and coming from a guy that could barely roll out of bed in the morning, believe me, your passion is out there and it's ready for your attention. Take action. Before you're ready, when things aren't perfect, when you're scared of the outcome, and when you don't know what lies ahead. Really want it like nothing ever before. Give yourself permission to have that which you desire more than anything else. And remember, at the end of the day, the only one standing in the way of you becoming fearlessly passionate is you. So believe in yourself. We, we do. do. Thank, Thank you. you.